I'm a human being having a human experience. I'm a human being having a human experience. What that means is I was born, of course, I'll die one day. And in the middle here, I'm trying to figure the world out, you know, trying to figure out my heritage, my family tree, the languages that I am supposed to speak, whether because my forefathers spoke it or whether I should speak a language because it allows me access into an economical space where I can thrive, where I should live, moving geographically, ge geographically from being born in Matadene in Newcastle, currently based in Johannesburg, exploring the world, finding other human beings, trying to figure them out as well. Last year, I made a video which went viral and it was explaining that I had officially decided that I'm joining AfriForum as a paying member. And I was attacked by a lot of black people, a lot of black people who are pro-black, who hate AfriForum and hate most organizations run by white Afrikaans people. What got me to finally own my decision to join AfriForum was I was on a platform as a co-host with DJ Smu, a huge icon, iconic entertainer, record label owner, um, entrepreneur, beverage company owner, uh, a maverick, so to speak. And one of the people I managed to get as a guest was one of the leaders of Africa Forum, Ernst Roots. Amazing human being, amazing leader. He came and he spoke about Africa Forum. We asked him questions, he answered them. And I found the courage to then join Africa Forum as a paying member and then go on a platform and go on platforms to constantly explain that I'm a member, what it means and why I joined. I was uh, attacked by, look, even DJ Spoo had many issues. And I think to this day, he's still like, I don't understand why this guy is a paying member. And by being a paying member, it doesn't mean I'm part of the leadership. I'm not part of the leadership of AfriForum. It does not mean I'm paid to support and endorse AfriForum. It would be nice, of course, and even if they did, it would be something that I'd openly own. I would say AfriForum pays me to be an ambassador, a spokesperson. It wouldn't be something that's hidden. Contrary to a lot of the popular beliefs out there by some feeble minds of certain black people, we aren't working in the dark with certain white interests and, being, and, and lying to people on platforms. In my journey with becoming a, a paying member of AfriForum, I got to meet an amazing young man called Ernst von Sale. Very patriotic to South Africa, very passionate South African, very passionate about the Afrikaner struggle, historically and in the present day. Um, very well educated and well read. Ernst von Sale himself, um, I've unfortunately never met Kali Kriel, who is the official leader of AfriForum. I'm hoping I'll meet him at some point. I pay 100 Rand a month. To Afri forums, not a lot of money, it doesn't change the world, and I've been doing it for like a year. So, 1200 honestly, it is a meaningless contribution. Um, Afri forum, last I checked, has over 300,000 paying members that pay an average of 150 rand per month on average. Obviously, some pay less, some people pay more. That would put their average income per month at over 45 million rand, 45 million rand. My 100 rand per month is nothing. However, as much as I don't pay much financially, I have a voice and my voice is growing and my voice has an impact. And what I've seen from when I've started speaking about AfriForum is a lot of black people, a lot of people that hated AfriForum have gone to research and say, let me actually go to the website. Let me see what these people are about. Many people listened to my conversation with Ernst van Sale on the panel show and they were like, it's so refreshing to hear two relatively young South Africans who are passionate about South Africa speaking about it, even if they may have differing ideologies. Many people listened to myself and DJs uh, interviewing Ernst Roots on the Hustlers Corner. Those interviews are available and I'll drop the links um, to, to them at the bottom for you guys to hear. AfriForum was founded not that long ago um, as a branch off from a trade union, 
for workers called solidarity or solidarität in Afrikaans. And they became this non-profit organization, a civil arm, whose mandate is to defend and protect and fight for the interests of Afrikaners and other minority groups in South Africa. Now, Afrikaners is a term that when you say it to many people, it's white people. And by and large, a lot of Afrikaners are white people. But a lot of Afrikaners are also colored people. And there are a few black people as well. And they identify with, I speak Afrikaans as my mother tongue, my main language, the same way I speak English. They brought Afrikaans al Qadah every day. That's their language of choice. They identify with Afrikaner kaltir, Afrikaans culture, where they say, look, when you speak rugby, when you speak cook sisters, which is a, a baked delicacy, when you speak a bultong, drivors, drivors, bultong is, is jerky. It could be beef, it could be some wild game. When you speak kair, which is basically chilas, chilling, tea, coffee. When you speak brais, which is a barbecue, where you brine meat on an open fire. Could add things like hunting, um te uh, You could add being a farmer, um te boer. Um, you could add just the idea of Afrikaners came into this country. Descendants of the Dutch, the Germans, the French, some other nations. They came together, they created this mixed mongrel breed and they identified as Africans, that this is now our home. Once as Afrikaners, we are from Africa. And they built themselves into a powerful force that later on, um, funded by arguably the Bruder Bond or the Afrikaner Bond, later on with the National Party, took over the government of South Africa, enacted the apartheid laws, which have tainted Afrikaner history and have turned Afrikaners into these horrible human beings, locally and globally. But this is part of Afrikaner culture. The music, you've got FRK, you've got Atia Kafir, um, like I said, the rugby and, 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 and. There are Afrikaans, there are colored people, sorry. There are black people that identify with this. And when you put them with ordinary black people, they don't identify with them. When you put them with English and other white people, they don't identify with them. They identify in being in Afrikaner spaces. And when you have to pick a culture, they would say, I am Afrikaans myself. So Afriforum fights for those people and other minority groups. And they've done a good job taking government to task, challenging government, challenging certain policies, challenging black economic empowerment as potentially reverse racism, trying to fight um, to legitimize in some way the old South African flag, seen as the apartheid flag, um, taking the EFF's leadership, Julius Mali Mamboiseni and Lozi, to court to try and get Dubuli Bunu, shoot the poor or kill the poor, to be defined as hate speech so that the song and the chant cannot be sang anymore. I haven't had an issue with most of the things that they've done, even though I may not support some of them. Now, some of the things that Afri Forum has managed to do quite successfully, besides having an amazing head office in Centurion, they've got a studio there which creates audio-visual content. They've created their own Afrikaner form of Netflix. Afrikaans people have got their channels on DSTV, CakeNet and the like. But Afri Forum has managed to build this Netflix of sorts and they've commissioned a few documentaries. One of them being the documentary on the killing of white farmers in South Africa, arguably by black people. One of them being the borders or the lack of borders between South Africa and some of our neighboring countries. And immigration is obviously a big and, and thorny issue in South Africa currently. Um, they've managed to, with solidarity, build Saltec, a skills-based, skills-focused tertiary institution, private, that teaches in Afrikaans. At a time when so many black people have been fighting for Afrikaans to be scrapped at the University of Stellenbosch, uh, the Universiteit von Stellenbosch in the Western Cape, um, arguably Kofsi's uh, Stellenbosch is Marty's, Kofsi's, the University of the Free State, um, the Universiteit van de Free Staat, uh, Pukka, Northwest University as it's called now, and other institutions. And groups like Afriforum have fought and said, why do you want to take Afrikaans out? It's a language. 
English is a language. You guys are not fighting against English. Why would you fight? You're not forced to learn in Afrikaans. You can choose to speak in English and be taught in English in your tertiary institutions. What becomes ironic is why are black people not scrapping English and saying we want Isizulu, Isikosa, Sitswana, Spedi, uh, Swati, uh, Tsonga, whatever. Why do you preserve and protect English but you have an issue with Afrikaans? Of course, the argument for black people is Afrikaans was used as a language. It was shoved down our throats and it's a trigger language from apartheid. So Soltec is privately owned and it's Afrikaans. And they intentionally made sure that it was private and they intentionally said it's going to be Afrikaans because we want to preserve our language and our heritage. Nothing stops any black group in this country from building an Isi Zulu tertiary institution, from building a Shivenda institution that only teaches in that language and focuses on skills. And one of the interesting things is that a, an African speaking child, white, colored, black, from grade R, grade RR, preschool, grade one, all the way to grade 12, and then tertiary. They can study in Afrikaans only and then access an Afrikaans economy without needing to learn any other language. It's one of the unique things Afrikaans people have been able to do, which unfortunately black native speaking people in South Africa have failed. You cannot from preschool, basic education, tertiary education, learn in Isizulu and then go and join an Isizulu economy. I think it's one of the failures of black leadership, whether you blame the kings, the chiefs, the politicians, the pastors, etc. It's been a failure. The Afrikaners have been able to do it. They are still doing it today with Soltec. Beautiful. And Soltec is not a white tertiary institution. It is for people who are comfortable to learn in Afrikaans. I can go and learn in Japan if I'm willing to learn Japanese. I can go and study in Germany if I'm willing to learn German. I can go and study in Russia. Currently, I can go and study in anywhere in the United Kingdom if I can speak English. And because we are an English-British colony, I can speak English in those spaces. I can speak English in America. Afri Forum decided to put its hand up and help the Meiwa family. Senzu Meiwa is the ex-captain and the goalkeeper of the national uh, soccer team, football team in South Africa, Bafana Bafana. And he was killed in mysterious circumstances at the home of his then girlfriend, Kelly Kumalo, who is a very famous singer in South Africa. The court case is ongoing, it's been years. No justice has been found. And Afri Forum said, Senzo Moyi was no different from a Sia Kolisi, no different from a Francois Pinar, no different from any captain of a national side. And it seems like no one is invested to help. Specifically from some of the black leadership, the politicians the ANC, the EFF, the sports teams or the clubs that he played for, why are they not aggressively getting legal teams together to fight and see justice? Afri Forum said, we'll put up our money. As much as it's for Afrikaners and minorities, we believe Senzo Meio is an icon and we are willing to invest money to fight this case. And they've done so. Now, sitting with Aaron's roots, the work they did with the Senzo Meio case, looking at the patrolling that they are doing on the borders, where our government, the Department of Home Affairs and Immigration, have failed dismally. And we have got undocumented illegal foreigners coming in and out where there are no border fences. They have said we will, we will patrol. Part of it is an interest because there are Afrikaners there who have farms. And this becomes a crime safety issue for them. Afri Forum with some of its funds and its volunteers in many, not many, in some, um, in a lot of Afrikaans neighborhoods. They do basic service delivery. They close potholes. They don't discriminate against who will drive over that road. They close potholes. They cut grass. They trim trees. They have neighborhood watch. This is not funded by tax money. It's not funded by the government. It's not funded by some political party. It is a civil organization doing that work. Incredibly, incredibly inspiring. Back in 2018, when I found it, I founded it with a couple of other amazing gentlemen. When I founded the Buy Black uh, movement, BBM, still has a website today. And if you're interested, I'll drop a link to the website. I was inspired by Afri Forum. I was like, why can we not copy what they've done as black people? Why not? 
I'm going to set up the buy black movement. I'm going to get black people who are pro-black, who are black conscious, like Stephen Bantubigo, who are going to be for black, to be like, we will put in a hundred rand a month. And if we can grow to a level of a thousand members, that's a hundred thousand rand a month we can use for black initiatives. To get into black spaces, in particular townships, service delivery, plant trees, specifically fruit trees, so that poor people can eat. Make sure that there's patrolling, neighborhood watches that are funded in townships and in other black areas. Invest in black schools so that the black schools can compete at some point with some of the top white schools because our government is failing. Invest in black sports teams. Soccer, could be rugby, could be cricket, netball, doesn't matter. Make sure that from a business perspective, black businesses get funding and we are going to set up a black fund. And some of the people who are part of NAFCOC, some of the people who are part of the Black Business Council, they joined the, the Buy Black movement. They were like, this sounds positive. And one of the unique IPs that I was going to build is a sticker to copy. So Afri Forum is one of the motivations, but also to copy kosher from the Jewish faith, uh, halal from the Islamic faith, to say, why can we not have a Buy Black sticker on foods and all other products and have businesses that have the buy black logo to say we are black owned we are black supplied we have black employees so if you buy from us please know that you are investing in a black economy game changer and i started on this work and very soon unfortunately the politics started people wanted to know about the money people were worried about leadership positions uh, people were calling us names and I was like, this is why a lot of black initiatives don't work. Too much politics and also too much democracy. One of the cool things Aaron Strut said about Afri Forum is we, we do not listen to our members because members' interests change. We have a set mandate that we have, as the leadership have said, we can always change it. But we have a set mandate and we tell people, this is our mandate. This is the work we're doing. If you believe in the work we're doing, come and donate. As, long, as soon as the work doesn't speak to you, leave. So with the Buy Black movement, you learn. These are the learnings. You learn. We should have said this is the mandate. You either buy into it or you don't. And you leave. And I also learned that black people are so different. They're not this homogenous one group. Kumbaya, let's all be black together. There are many black people who don't care about the black agenda. Some of them hate black people. Some of them will do anything to destroy black spaces, including some of your political leaders. They do not care. They don't care. And in that time, I was also realizing that, you know what? Black is not a value system. Being Afrikaans is not being white. Afri Forum and Afrikaners don't fight for white people. They don't fight for English people. They don't fight for Jewish people. They don't fight for Americans. They fight for Afrikaners, including non-white Afrikaners. It's a value system. If you're going to look at uh, the Shembe Church, they're not about black people. They're about people that identify with what they stand for, which is Christian values with an African spin as uh, founded by Isaiah Shembe. Black is not a value system. Neither is white. Yeah, white supremacy, white imperialism, I hear you. But realistically, when the Americans are fighting, they fight for Americans. And you saw Donald Trump fighting for ASAP Rocky to be extradited to America. That they will prioritize sometimes white Americans, I mean black Americans, over white people elsewhere. No, but white people are always united. What's happening in Russia and Ukraine, bro? If white people are so united, why are Russia and Ukraine at conflict? Those are two white groups. Why is America trying to get even Africa to pick a side between Russia and Ukraine? These are two white groups, white countries. Oh, the Asians are united. There was a fight between North and South Korea. There have been fights. World wars, the French, the German, the British. Fights between white people. South Africa had an anglo Boer war. Today called the South African War where the Afrikaners were fighting the British, whites. So the concept of white unity is a myth. Whites will unite racially if they are fighting another racial group. 
The same way black people united under apartheid to fight against a white oppressive government regime. But after that, there's no unity. It's a myth. People unite around value systems. And my value system is penalism. Finding good people that want to do good work, regardless of race, sex, gender, nationality. Whether you are a legal or an illegal foreigner, whether you come from another country, like, I don't have control over that. I do not have a mandate to serve as government. I'm not paid to fight against Zimbabweans or Malawians or Nigerians or people from Lebanon or people from Turkey. That is not my mandate. I live in a country where I would like some level of safety, understanding that people don't come in and out because that's dangerous for everyone. But I can't say, oh, you're from another country. You're not a South African. Get out of here. I care about good people. And there are good people from all races, all nationalities, all sexes and gender. So I went through this process where I ended up leaving my pro-black stance and I became a non-racialist to say, there are so many good people who want the world to be better. And when you say, you're great, you're amazing, I'd love to work with you. Unfortunately, you're white. You kill it. You lose good people. You lose good people. So I joined Afri Forum, I started paying and I'd get bashed every other day on Twitter. Many black people who hate Afri Forum and, and other such groups, they attack me, call me a sellout, call me an Afri Forum spokesperson, um, an apartheid apologist, um, all these words that are, that are not correct and not true. And at times an Afri Forum fights fights I don't believe in, like fighting to legitimize the old South African flag, taking the EFF to court, things I do not agree in. All of a sudden I'm complicit in those things, which I'm not. Now, I'm finding myself wanting to leave as a member. Again, I have to emphasize, my little 100 Rand means nothing to Afri Forum. And I can imagine it means nothing to the members. They were there way before me. I'm a nobody. I do hope that I shone a spotlight on Afri Forum so that many black people could open their minds on the idea of what Afri Forum is, on the idea that Afri, what Afri Forum stands for, on Soltech, and maybe even be inspired like I was to be like, why don't we create a Zulu forum, a Kosa forum? Why don't we create a Sutu forum, which has values? And if you're white, if you're Indian, if you're colored and you identify as vendor and you identify as Bedi, come join us and let's build something like Afri Forum. And let's build a skills institution that teaches in Swati. Let's build a, a, an institution or space which teaches in whatever language and has whatever cultural norms. I hope some people joined Afri Forum because of me, because we need more such organizations to move. Ian Cameron and Action Society and the work they're doing to try and eradicate crime in the Western Cape. Ntlantla Lux and Soweto Parliament, of which I was dragged as well with him. I think Ntlantla Lux is a good person. He does good work. But now, because he was linked to Operation Dudula, when I help him and I support him, all of a sudden it means I hate foreigners. I'm xenophobic. Because people unfortunately are narrow-minded and think in binary. Black and white, male or female, and that's it. I think in good and evil. And good and evil has no color, has no race. A short granny somewhere could be evil as hell. And then some tall Nazi Germany, white Afrikaner sergeant, lieutenant looks might be a really good person. But obviously it requires you to look beyond race, gender and those things, which most people are too lazy. Their minds are too lazy to comprehend. And it doesn't help when the politicians and the propaganda fuel the race and the, the gender wars and the nationality wars, etc. Gift of the Givers is an amazing organization. Um, founded mostly on Islamic principles, founded by Muslim people, run by an amazing Muslim gentleman called Imtiaz Suleiman. They do not preach Islam as far as I know under Gift of the Givers. They focus on the work at hand and they focus on help and that's why we contribute to Gift of the Givers. The problem now with Afri Forum is at some point they blur the lines between civil organization defending the interests of their people and then getting into politics. And this is where now my dilemma of 
should I leave? Should I stay? Is and it was inflamed by the singing of Julius Malima's uh, Julius Malima. Well, he sang it, the EFF 10, 10 year celebration, Tubulipun, a polarizing song, which inflames and raises racial tension and hatred between races. It it fuels it. Can argue all you want whether the song calls for the killing and shooting of white people or no, it's just a struggle song. It's a reminder. You can argue whatever you want, but the fact is it fuels racial tension and racial hatred. And it almost is done intentionally so. Benny Johnson in America goes and posts and fucking posts fake news about what black people are calling for the killing of white people in South Africa. It's just bullshit. Elon Musk goes and, and responds and he says they are calling for white genocide in South Africa, tags the president. Cyril Ramaphosa asks why he's not saying anything. Bullshit. Julius Malima responds to Elon Musk, Wulela Masipa, you're talking shit. Bullshit. Afri Forum took Julius Malima to court to try and get this song and chant to be deemed hate speech. They lost the case. I believe they're appealing it. I think John Stianazen and the DA, after this singing now, have also opened a new, a new case. The song is not hate speech. The song is not hate speech. The song is not, we hate white people. The song is a struggle song from back in the day, which was speaking against a white system of oppression. And yes, when Konto Oasis and other guerrilla um, armies, black armies, was saying we must be comfortable to kill white people and kill the Afrikaner, etc. Now, it was back then, it's not hate speech, but should we be singing it? Does it fuel racial tension and racial hatred? Yes. It's not calling for the killing of anyone, but what if some idiotic person takes it literally? What if? What, what does it serve us to sing it today? Specifically with those lyrics. You can sing so many struggle songs to remind you that we are still in a struggle, to remind you that the ANC government 30 years later has failed to uplift black people. Failed. They have become complicit in oppression. They have become rich on their own. They have now... They are rich white friends and they are the buffer between the poor black masses and the rich elite, which is mostly white. They failed. So some people are like, let's go back to the struggle because this supposed Moses, which is the ANC, never gave us the promised land. They lied to us. Today, we've got more social grant recipients. Today, we've got more income inequality. Today, we've got more black people that are struggling under a black government. So we're going to revive that anger. But then you take it out on the wrong people because now you're not singing Tuhuli ANC or Tuhula black politicians who are the people that are complicit in your oppression today. And there are people now who are innocent, haven't done any wrong. Literally, they are the descendants of white privilege from past, but they didn't choose it. And you want to attack and, and argue and bash them because your political leaders have failed you. And you refuse to take accountability and say, who am I voting for? Who am I working for? Who do I buy from? So the song fueled this racial tension and hatred, made me angry. And there was so much fake news from Elon Musk to Benny Johnson, Julius Malima and his fucking arrogance, because I think he probably enjoys watching his EFF followers getting excited as well. But then Afri Forum came into the picture as well of which now I'm a contributing member and, you know, I appreciate the work they do. And the way they were happy with Elon Musk saying these things and the way they were going in hard. And people I respect, Aaron's roots, Aaron's van sale, some of the things they were tweeting, some of the things they were saying really upset me. I was triggered because I was reminded, you know, I was friends with an amazing woman, I'm not going to mention her name, who's a very staunch activist in the gender-based violence a space, a very staunch activist for feminism. And we used to have back and forth. We used to argue a lot. And I eventually decided that, you know what, I, I think you guys are adding more fuel to gender wars than helping them. And I actually think you guys appreciate it or prefer it when men and women are fighting. Hashtag men are trash. So we speak about Duhuli Bunu. They had a post at some point called Duhula Masende. Dulama Sende means shoot the balls, the scrotum, the testicles, which means shoot men's balls. Back then, it was just trending, it was, you know, 
fueling gender wars, not trying to get men and women to work together, but adding to the polarization. Of course, under the banner of women are being attacked, women are being killed, etc. They came up with these terms of femicide. And then when you looked at the numbers, 3,000 women killed, uh, 3,000, 18, 19,000 men killed. And you're like, men are being killed, but no one fucking cares. And in the conversations I had with her, I started realizing that a lot of these GBV, of which I even hate the term to this day, it's violence against women by men. That's actually, let's not call it gender-based. Let's call it men hurting women. Just call it what it is. A lot of these non-profit organizations ejaculate. They fucking squirt every time a woman is raped, every time a woman is murdered, and it becomes big news. Because for them, they get to use that material to then start a campaign. American funding. A lot of American companies and foundations fund Africans who are fighting these things. Which, like I said, I, I believe it fuels gender wars and the like. European companies and foundations. We didn't know what it Karabo. I forgot Karabo. I don't know if it was her surname. Killed. Gang rate, oh, they get excited. Boy, we are about to go on the streets. We are going to be called by Newsroom Africa, SAPC, ENCA. The scourge of women murders and the rape and the men are what do I know? And the emotions get up. And then what happens with the emotions is women who are on the fence, men who are on the fence, companies are called out. What are you doing to stop the violence against women? What are you doing? It's like, oh, Let's actually send some money. And it becomes their way to fundraise. And they get more members and they get more money. You can imagine if the EFF realistically were to go out. Some of their members in their red regalia with their berets. And went to farms or went to white Afrikaner neighborhoods. And started gunning down Afrikaners, white Afrikaners. You can imagine how exciting that would be for EFF leadership. To go in, not EFF, sorry, I apologize. For Afri Forum and other such organizations, the Democratic Alliance, the Freedom Front, to go out and say, they are killing us. And all of a sudden, Americans, Europeans, and even some black Africans were like, but this is bullshit. They pump money. Afri Forum, Freedom Front, DA, but this is wrong. They are killing innocent people. Everyone goes ham. Everyone goes crazy. That's how America managed to fundraise and raise sprint money. To go in the war against uh, weapons of mass destruction. The, the war against terrorism. In Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan. M lots of corruption there in the defense contracts. Now. Afri Forum is a non-profit organization. It's a civil organization. It, it fights for what it says. But this becomes like an opportune moment to number one. Align with the richest man in the world. Elon Musk. To, uh, to get sympathy from Americans. They'd gotten sympathy from Donald Trump when he'd been exposed to the documentary against genocides, the farm murders. And I've made videos about this before, calling bullshit. Calling bullshit on the data. Or not even on the data, on the notion that there's white genocide, that there's farm murders. Over 20, I think 25,000 people killed in the last reporting, 22, 2021, 2022. Over 25,000, 3,000, close to 3,200 women killed of the 25,000 women. Half of those women killed by their intimate partners, their lovers, their boyfriends, their husbands. Huge chunk of men, largely black men killed. How many farm murders? Arguably between 55 and 80. Of the 25 farm murders, where's the genocide? Of those 55 to 80 murders, they do not distinguish between black and white, number one. And number two, they do not distinguish between farm owner and farm worker. If you listen to some of the people at Afri Forum, some of the people in the DA, some of the uh, racist white people, they're like, oh, those figures are, are wrong. They're not accurate. Which figures are then accurate? Because we could also say, well, the 3,200 women, it's actually 10,000 women. The Let's call it 19,000 men. It's actually not 19,000 men. It's 50,000 men. 
Anyone can say the data is wrong, but this is all we have. This is what Statistics South Africa has for us to work with. How do you have better data than them? Show us. But are you going to tell us that of the 19,000 majority black men that were killed, of the close to 3,200 women that were killed, half of them by their lovers, no, no one should give a fuck about that. We should give a fuck about this 55 to 80 people. Forget everyone else. Forget everyone else. Because clearly some deaths are more important than others. Oh, black, random black man shot. Mm, whatever. There's no organization. There's no uproar. It's not going to go to America. There's no wealthy black man, Aliko Dangote, that's going to tweet, black men are dying in South Africa. Let's do something. No one. Who the fuck cares? Women killed. Ah, let's set up an activist group. Let's fundraise. Men are trash. Men are killing us. Let's all have a frenzy. Cyril Ramaphosa must launch a summit against GBV. Of the 55 to 80 farm murders, let's say, for example, 60 of them are white farm owners. Oh, 60. Oh, who's going to feed the people? Food security. Let's all panic. Shut the whole world down for these 60 people. Fuck everyone else. I would love to return a relationship with Afri Forum and its leadership. I would love to contribute however I can in their audiovisual work. I'm gonna brush up on my Afrikaans and maybe do an interview there with maybe Arts van Sale. It's gonna lacquer Afrikaans brought brought or rugby or the Nazi van South Africa over everything. You know, politics, rugby, state of the nation. If I can contribute to some of the border work, whether it's Afri Forum or other people who are like, we are defending our borders because our government is failing and because our government is corrupt and they take bribes to turn a blind eye and to let people in and to even give them fake uh, IDs and maybe passports. I'm happy to contribute to, to such initiatives. I love the idea of Soltec. I love the idea of children that can go to a tertiary institution. Whether they're learning in English or Afrikaans, I personally don't care. Can these kids acquire skills and then go and add value in the world? You invite a black boy, you invite a colored boy to come and do your plumbing, to come and fix your car, to come and fix the electrical work in your house, to come and do construction, and they speak Afrikaans. Who the fuck cares? Your, your pipes are sorted, your electricity is sorted, your house has been built. These are skills. The fact that they speak English already is not a native South African language. So who cares? So I'm happy to contribute to Soltech and the initiatives and see if we can try and raise bursaries, scholarships for kids to go and study there. South Africa and various companies here, the government, they've got money to send black kids, black South African kids to places like Japan, China, Russia, Cuba to go learn in foreign languages, Spanish, Russian, Japanese, Mandarin. You've got a South African, proudly South African institution. It's teaching in one of the official South African languages. And you're going to say, no, fuck this language. I'd rather my child go study in Cuba or Russia. <laughs> Ignorance. Happy to support that. Happy to support some of the fights of Afri Forum. And, um, whether it's the a, a leader in this country that has been killed and there's no justice. Whether it's actually protecting minority groups, white Afrikaners, white English people, could be Indians, um, could be whoever, happy to support. But now the idea that my little measly hundred rand and some of my money might go to fueling racial tension and racial hatred goes into spreading false propaganda globally. Because you must understand this false propaganda is not just about the EFF and Julius makes all of us look bad. All of us black people, and to some degree, all of us South Africans, regardless of race. Because then white people overseas bash white people here and say, what are you doing? Why are you not a member of Afri Forum? Why are you supporting these black people? And you're like, that's fucking ignorant, bro. That's ignorant. The audacity, Elon Musk, all the audacity to come and constantly 
pretend to care about issues here and have a bias. I, I don't know what the number is, but you might find that like 50 people are killed every week at the Cape Flats, in the Western Cape, drugs, gangs. Jordan Hill Lewis, the mayor, Alan Windy, the premier, they don't prioritize those things. They don't seem to care. There are people around the country being killed. Taxi wars, political killings in Guazulu Natal, in KZN. Um, no one seems to care. When America was bombing innocent people in Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, where was the uproar from white South Africans? Where? Innocent people. Americans murdering children, women. Where was the uproar? Uh, Israel and Palestine, ongoing conflict, which is arguably religious, historical, arguably racial. Where's the uproar? People murdered in thousands, in tens of thousands. No one cares. Black Lives Matter, another very annoying, polarizing movement. Black people being killed by the police in America. Where was the uproar? By white people in South Africa, by the so-called farm owners and the farm people and the Afrikaners calling out, we condemn the police killing zero. Zero. Because they don't fucking care. Because to some degree, it actually is about race to some of these people. They hide behind culture they hide behind class no this is for a higher lsm we're trying to attract you know higher class higher income earners the majority of them are white some indian majority of blacks and colors are poor so that almost becomes a racial discrimination no we are focusing on on the zulu people you know all the zulu people oh those are black no 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 no. it's not racial it's cultural it's racial, bro. Zulu people are black. No, all the Muslims. It's, it's, we're not racist. We're not, it's just Muslim. You know, we know it's going to be Indians and Arabs, mostly. I'm aware of it. I'm aware of these things. I'm not ignorant to them. And I didn't just wake up and figure these things out yesterday. I'm aware. But I've been trying to focus on good people doing good work. But it seems at some point, these good people who are doing good work, they seem to... Maybe their masks slip and we see some racism of sorts. And it, it breaks my heart because I'm like, why? Why? My brother Pinson was saying, people like myself, Joe Rogan of the Joe Rogan Experience, Patrick Bitt, David, PBD uh, of Valuetainment. We struggle because we are not left. We are not right. We are in the middle. And the people in the middle catch it from everyone. Because if I say, congrats, Julius Malima and the EFF on 10 years, what happened to Tuli Matonzela, you get attacked by the people that hate the EFF. They accuse you of so many things you do not believe in. Are you that racist organization? So you also support the killing of the farmers. I'm like, you fucking brick. If you're like, you know, I appreciate the work Afri Forum is doing. Congrats to the Freedom Front Plus. Thank you to the DA and shout out to Chris Papas. Oh, are you supporting the racist DA and Afri Forum? These are apartheid apologists. It's people like you are Askaris. We would have burnt you with tires back in the day. We You're working for the white agenda. You fucking thick brick. So the African National Congress, the ANC, has been our preferred political party for many years. Because of the leading role they took in the fight against apartheid. Leading Pan-Africanist Congress, the PAC, Azapo. Leading even the Communist Party, the SACP. Uh, leading even the IFP, in Qatar Freedom Party. We've loved them so much. We love Nelson Mandela. Many people to this day still love Tabumbegi. Some people were fans of Khalima Mutante. Many people love Jacob Zuma. Um, we've loved the Sisulu family. Umamu Lindi was Sisulu now, but her parents... You know, Walter, Albertina, um, so many amazing human beings, man. And so much amazing work. Those of us that have traveled the country that come from pre-apartheid South Africa, I was born in 1986. Apartheid, I think, may have ended in 1990. I stand to be corrected. And we had our first democratic elections in 1994, when Nelson Mandela and the ANC were voted into power. 
if you ever travel the villages around the country, you would see the gravel roads or the dust roads that today are tarred. They have tar. Talking about my grandmother's home, Egvugen, her sister's home, Kwashati. Places where there were no tar. Places where when I'd visit my grandmother, they had the bucket toilet system where you shit, defecate in a bucket, where there was no electricity. Places where you had to go and buy oil for the paraffin, uh, for the paraffin, or you'd have to go and buy paraffin for the lamp or the oil lamp, where we'd have to, with my cousins, take a wheelbarrow and go to the river with these 25 liter bottles and go and pick water from the river and, and, and carry it so that we have water to use. Where when it gets dark outside of the paraffin candle, paraffin lamp, the candle, where at my grandmother's sister's place, Kwashati, we'd have to shit in a long drop. And I watched those spaces have flushable toilets. I watched those places get RDP homes that are more dignified. I watched those places have electricity, tarred roads. I saw children wearing school uniform, going to school, coming back with their books. I saw kids having buses that transport them to and from school, getting given bicycles. I saw people who were struggling with farming from the Department of Agriculture, getting animal feed, getting structures, whether it's for pigs, whether it's a structure of, uh, for a tunnel um, to grow vegetables, a greenhouse of sorts. Amazing work. I saw black people having some legal, level of dignity. A person who comes from poverty is now a school teacher and they can uplift their family in real time. They are now a nurse, now a traffic cop. Someone now has access to business funding and they are now running a decent business with over 200 employees. Black people now can stand on world stages and, and add value and argue and debate. They can invent things. They can create. The ANC has done amazing work and the emotions, when you actually think about it, would, especially going into the 2024 national elections, they would make you be like, I cannot vote for any other political party but this one. Look at the work they've done. Look at this granny who now can get her medicines close to a clinic that was built. Look at this child that doesn't have to cross a river anymore because there's now a school that was built. And as far as kids that couldn't get into tertiary now are studying medicine, engineering, accounting, making an impact. Kids that are studying everywhere overseas that can now speak foreign languages. Thanks to the ANC government, black people who are now millionaires, billionaires, who would have ever thought, who live in the most lush of suburbs that we were kept out of. You could only come in there as a gardener or as a domestic worker. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. If the ANC was an Afri forum, I'm like, I'm putting my hundred rand here every month. Look at the work they're doing. Then comes the corruption. The arms deal. Then comes people dying at a mental institution with the life as demand. Then comes miners fighting for a fair wage, being killed at Marikana Lonman Mine, London Mining Company, of which Cyril Ramaphosa was a shareholder. Back in the day, leading the biggest mine worker strike, fast forward Animal Farm, he is now a pig, asking for concomitant action because he's a billionaire, and now miners are being killed under his watch, and arguably from his directive. COVID money looted, 500 billion relief with tenders and masks and all money gone. Tender corruption, tender killings, people killing each other for procurement. People being forced to take medicines they don't need, vaccines they don't need. Black politicians that are siding with the previous oppressors to be part of their businesses so they continue oppressing. No income equality. Our incomes are still confidential. And when you look at the data, black people are still being underpaid. Greater income equality than ever before. Greater wealth in the white population than ever before. Greater poverty than ever before. More social grant recipients than when the ANC took over in 1994. There are more black people today that have become retards, disabled, crippled. They cannot exist without government giving them 490 for their kids, giving them this social relief or distress 350. They can't exist. They have been dehumanized and turned into beggars by the ANC government. The political killings, 
the constant gaslighting by people like Cyril who fundamentally don't care about this country. Now I have to review, do I still support the ANC or is this what I'm seeing now really? Do I really want to support this? Because it doesn't look good. I'm a human being having a human experience and what that means is I will constantly change. I will grow. I will make decisions. I will change those decisions. I will align to a group. I will leave that group aligned to another group. Where I am in my journey of this human experience is I'm a panelist and I believe in trying to find good people and protecting good people, regardless of race, gender, nationality, cultural background. And when I find these organizations that are doing good work, I would like to try and help them. If the ANC government is running a charity thing somewhere, I'm happy to go and join. If the EFF is going to donate something to needy people, I will gladly join. If Afri Forum is doing amazing work, I will gladly join. If the Democratic Alliance, especially in Umgeni, under Chris Papas, is doing good work, I will join. But I think maybe my lesson is identify the initiatives you, you're trying to invest in and support and send your money directly to that. Because maybe the idea of sending money, vo uh, volunteering, etc. to a general umbrella, it might not be the best because there are so many nuances. If you're going to do charity work with the EFF, don't wear red, don't wear the beret, don't wear an EFF t-shirt. Go there as a panelist, go there just as yourself and be like, we're helping. And if people take pictures, it's fine. If they say EFF members, you tell them we're not EFF members. We came here to do good work. And if they're taking pictures as an EFF group, be like, this is an EFF picture. We're not going to be involved. We're just here to do charity work and we'll leave. We're not members of Gift of the Givers, but we're here to volunteer. We're not members of the ANC. We're here to volunteer and help. We are going to help directly to, to make the world better. But maybe the idea of being linked to some of you guys, maybe that's not what's best for me and my belief system. And maybe that's what's best for the world. I haven't made a decision yet, but um, yet. But I just wanted to share my thoughts. I'm, I'm disappointed by so many people. Elon Musk, Julius Malima, Benny Johnson, even though I don't know him. Um, Ernst van Sel, Ernst Roots, and some of the tweets that they sent out. The polarization by John Stianhazen and the DA, by many of the black minds that I was respecting on Twitter, social media, some of the white people that I thought were really great, all of them picked a side. The ones that disappointed me. All of them in this picked a side. Very few of them were like, look, let's isolate the song, speak about the song, and let's discuss if this is what's best for the South African future. Now we're getting reports about farmers being brutally tortured and killed randomly and propaganda is being spun. Anyone can bring in similar propaganda to black people being killed by white people randomly now. And then it fuels more racial tension. And I, I do not want to currently be part of the fueling of racial tension. I do not want to support that. I'm happy with people sharing their views, their thoughts. I'm happy with people being racist, doing their thing. But I don't want to be a part of that. And I don't want to use my platforms to further create a racial divide. I'm trying to find good white people, good black people, good Indian people, good coloreds, good people from anywhere who are like Penn. We want to work. We want to put in the work. We want to win. Springboks as a rugby club team, national team of South Africa that is going to the World Cup to represent South Africa. They have different political views. I can imagine all of them vote for different political parties. They have different backgrounds, come from poverty, some come from middle class, some come from wealthy families, different schooling experiences, different uh, neighborhoods, townships, suburbia. Um, they have different views. Some of them probably have strong views racially, some of them probably are moderate. They have different religious backgrounds. You know, some might be atheist, some might be Christian. We've had a Muslim springbok or we had Muslim springboks. Um, some might believe in um, African beliefs, African spirituality and the like. 
they come together and when they get on the field, they need to put all of those things aside. And they need to focus on we are here as one team to become a strong team. And each person must bring their skills and their talents and their creativity and their diversity so that they can defeat another team to win. I am trying to, in the way that I'm moving and the people I'm trying to find, I'm trying to build a springbok economy for South Africa and maybe for the African continent. I'm trying to build a springbok social space where whites, blacks, colored Indians who have different backgrounds can come together and say, we have crime in our neighborhood. Let's get rid of the crime. Where people are going to say, we want to invest in the local schools so they can have better infrastructure. So people are going to say things like, we have an issue with undocumented people in our space. We don't care if they're foreign or local, where they come from. We want to make sure, do you have an ID? Do you have a passport? Do you have a permit to be here? Whether you come from Germany or America or China or Zimbabwe or the DRC, we just want to know that you're documented and we can track who you are and where you're from. We want to do good work. We want to make sure our neighborhoods are clean and safe and the grass is cut. We want to make sure that in our companies, people are making sales, people are manufacturing things, people are farming produce, people are making a positive impact. And we want to park our belief systems. Your belief system, if it creeps into a space and is causing tension and division, we, you Muslims, are busy bombing Americans. Bro, yeah, but you see your American brothers, what they're doing. Yeah, you see you Zimbabweans. And if you're coming in here with that energy to feel division, on what we're trying to build you're not welcome in this space and i'll carry on look on my platforms bringing people that are extreme left or right because i want us to have the conversations and i'm happy for people to say their piece even if i disagree i'll challenge a little bit but allow them freedom and then on my platforms like here i'm gonna come and say i disagree with that i disagree with that because these are my views I'm not going to shove my views down their throats, but I want us to all hear each other. To be like, I'd never thought of that. Oh, this is why white people are scared of black people. It's because every perpetrator of crime in their existence has been a black person. The same way in your life, every perpetrator of racism and oppression has been a white person. Oh, I see. Have you ever had good white people in your life? Let's find them. Let's highlight them. White person. Have you ever had good black people in your life? Let's speak about them. Let's highlight and let's find each other. And let's build a springbok. I'll probably come up with a better term for it. This united part. We are a minority. The non-racialists, the non-sexist people. We are a minority. But I'm hoping we'll find each other. And look, we might end up saving a lot of people who are currently stressed, depressed, miserable, scared. Because they are imprisoned by racial division. Sex, gender division, nationality division, what they call patriotism. And it is fueled by the political leaders. It is fueled by the pastor, uh, the pastor by the pastors, the priests, um, the imams, uh, the rabbis. They are fueled by certain celebrities, certain influences, fueled by kings and chiefs, by queens, by certain people that make you pick a side. Nothing wrong with picking a side, but... Must If it starts hurting other people and looking down on other people, there's a problem somewhere there. I wanted to share some of my thoughts. Uh, what do I owe you guys? I owe you guys... I'm going to post a link uh, to the Afri Forum website. I'm going to post a link to my sit-down with Ernst von Sale. Uh, I've had a couple of them, so I'm going to post a couple of links. I'm going to post a link to my sit-down with DJ Smoo and Ernst Roots. Um, and then I'm going to post a link, I guess, to the video I did unpacking the issue with the Dubuli Bono song. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. Um, but I will stay positive. And I believe I will find my tribe, my type of people who are about good versus evil. I am about good people <laughs> versus evil people. And if we can keep on that and we, if we can focus on doing the work, I think we'll win. The last link I owe you is a link to the website for Buy Black, for the Buy Black movement. Pen you all the black pen. I love you guys very much. I look being a little bonga bantu abasema kaya. Gweda shlanga ni si abantu. Si tutuwe si abantu. Si bu se si sonke. Si bonti inki nga zetu. Si ngai. Shlazulula ganjani.
sikwazi ukuthi isithuthuke siye phambili siye abantu vulnet byranki say on all the africans spreak and the mensa what may work um borg um all the mensa what for may work lief us um all the mensa what ek um sin by rugby wedstrijde uh wedstrijde um as ek winkel toe gaan in die strate ek ek waardeer julle ondersteuning baie um let's try and build a better world we have an ability to be something beyond what our predecessors have been we have had leaders in the past who have been very amazing very few of them have successfully built spaces of merit very few of them have been able to build successful multiracial multicultural spaces that thrive and win springbox is an amazing example another example i love with my heart is the marvel cinematic un- universe mcu and what they've been able to build with the avengers and all the movies that they've created i think we can do something very special that cuts across racial lines cultural lines religious lines um nationality lines history lines ability lines everyone has a role to play everyone has a role to play but we can isolate the evil and see how we can rid of them because some of them are only here to destroy and we need to get rid of evil penuel the black pen u penuel i penel imnyama u siba ulumnyama sibo lunsundu is penuel i swart pen have a great day cheers